1966, a table of trans people at Jean Compton's cafeteria in Los Angeles were confronted by policemen. When they attempted to arrest one of the drag queens, she threw a coffee in his face and a riot ensued. This event, later named the Compton Cafeteria Riots, set a stage for the LGBT pride movement, as well as developing seminars for LGBT people on protection against police brutality. It was the first known instance of collective militant queer resistance to police harassment in United States history. This movement began on June 28, 1969, when New York City police raided the Stonewall Inn. It was a bar for hustlers and street queens. And these are people who had nothing to lose when they fought back against the police. If you think back in, in history, it's those people who really start these kind of revolutions. Marsha's birthday was celebrated that evening. And she came into the Stonewall Inn to just hang out with Sylvia and her friends. And then all of a sudden, you know, stuff popped off. Marsha was a force of nature. They said that she threw the first shot glass at Stonewall. And it was the shot shot glass heard around the world. The riots lasted for three days, and when they were over, Marsha and Sylvia's work began. These two street queens who barely had enough to feed themselves, but they started STAR as a way to take care of their sisters. Street transvestite action revolutionaries. For me, it's the home that Marsha and Sylvia created. They pulled their money together, the money that they hustled in Times Square, making money from John's, and they used that money to take care of themselves. This is back in the 70s when resources weren't being allocated to trans youth like that or to LGBT youth that were on the street. Although Marsha and Sylvia worked tirelessly for the greater gay rights movement, they weren't always welcomed. Well, if you watch the clip of the liberation rally in 1973, Sylvia Rivera took the mic and people didn't want her to talk. I was there and they booed her off the stage and I was just devastated. Y'all better quiet down! She's like, we cannot be a movement for the white middle class. We have to be a movement for all of the people. And then at the end, she brings everyone together with a beautiful bow of making them chant gay power. There's a moment when she's just like, you feel all of the pain of everything. When I became a drag queen, I started to live my life as a woman. Sylvia Rivera, a Puerto Rican, Venezuelan trans woman and activist, is known for throwing the first bottle at the Stonewall riots. Her activism started as a homeless 11-year-old prostitute on the streets of New York, where she found community with other LGBT people of color. She grew up around other poor LGBT people in makeshift cardboard shacks along the edge of the Hudson. Rivera refused to have transgender rights erased from the gay rights agenda and remained largely critical of assimilationist organizations such as the Human Rights Campaign and Gay Activist Alliance, whose goal was to make LGBT culture and community more attractive to the heterosexual majority rather than seek equal rights and acceptance. In 1971, the Gay Activist Alliance dropped portions from bills dealing with transgender protection to appeal to the majority despite Rivera's and others' protests. Michael Bronski, an LGBT historian, speaks about Rivera and the Gay Activist Alliance. But for all of her work with Gay Activist Alliance, when it came time to make deals, GAA dropped the portions in the civil rights bill that dealt with transvestitism and drag. It just wasn't possible to pass it with such allegedly extreme elements included. But not only was the language of the bill changed, GAA, which was becoming increasingly more conservative, even changed its political agenda to exclude issues of transgenderism. It was also not unusual for Sylvia to be urged to front possibly dangerous demonstrations, but when the press showed up, she would be pushed aside by the more middle-class, straight-appearing leadership. In 1995, Rivera was still hurt. When things started getting more mainstream, it was like, we don't need you no more. But she added, and I'm every year in Stonewall Car lately, there was a time when they didn't even want me in Stonewall Car. Harry Pride, who runs the Gay March and the Gay Festival, tried to 
banned transvestites from the parade in like 1978. And yes, there are fellow gay men who had cast a, an evil eye at you and said, oh, they're giving us a bad name. Because after all, I mean, all you turn on TV, there was a gay pride parade and all they showed were the drag queens. So what Sylvia and Marcia did is they went ahead of the opening banner and as two transvestites, I guess with some friends, they marched in front of the parade so it made them end up leading the whole parade. So the, the, the committee decided, well, we've got to include transvestites in our parade. Hey, Murphy was the one that put me in a dumb car in 1980. He took me from the back of the parade and put me out front. But he get, evidently watched me through the years since 1969 and everything. And that's what Sylvia does, is that she's going to serve you harsh truths, and she's going to say, at the end, we are all going to leave here as a community. At the first Pride marches, people again tried to push Marsha and Sylvia aside, but they would not be stopped. For over 20 years, Marsha was a fixture in the New York City Pride parades. She had to march because people died for her to have the right to march. That's how come I've been walking for gay rights all these years, because you never completely have your rights. In 1992, Marsha marched one last time. Just days after the parade, her body was found in the Hudson River. It was one of those bizarre twists of fate. I look out in the river and there was something bobbing in the water. Sorry. It was only later that I found out it was Marsha P. There were flyers and flyers everywhere of her beautiful face because the police ruled it a suicide. Marsha's friend said, no, I don't think so. Marsha had been harassed. They always treat me like I'm the world's murderer, the highest murderer in the world. And no, I was arrested. Think about that. I do not 
believe in a revolution, but you all do. I believe in the gay power. I believe in us getting our rights, or else I would not be out there fighting for our rights. That's all I wanted to say to your people. If you all want to know about the people that are in jail, and do not forget Bambi Lamore and Dora Mark, Kenny Messner, and other gay people that are in jail, come and see the people at Starhouse on 12th Street. The rights that were dropped included the right to use public unisex bathrooms, protection from wrongful termination in the workplace, as well as protection from police brutality. At this time, over 60% of trans people had considered suicide at some point in their lives. 45% of trans people were homeless. An estimated 30% were sex workers, and 70% had reported experiencing police brutality. As Rivera noticed in an increasing gap between the privileged and the marginalized of the LGBT community, she and several others started their own organizations and movements. Rivera founded Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries with fellow activist and trans woman Marsha P. Johnson in 1970. The organization catered to the growing needs of the marginalized in the LGBT community, mostly homeless transgender youth of color. This included providing food, clothing, transitional resources, and a shelter called Star House, as well as pressing for transgender inclusion in mainstream LGBT activist groups and legislation. Those who had stayed in homeless drag communities under bridges near the Hudson River since the late 1950s now had shelter and protection. Star ran successfully for more than 20 years under Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson's leadership. And tell Marsha P. Disco romance. They call me a legend in my own time because there's so many queens gone that I'm one of the few queens that's still left from the 70s and today. But I'm not the only one that's that old legendary queen. She was a boat of stuff, a holy person, a saint on street corners every day on, on Christopher Street. And people could walk past her, ignore her, and be blind to her. But those who, who saw her and understood, she is a reminder of what the village was and what other younger people can be. Tomorrow night, the candlelight vigil. The candlelight vigil is for people who die of AIDS. And we've been having it for seven years. And uh, I just don't like to miss them because I never know who's next. I never know who's going to be me or one of my best friends. And I'd like, and I'd like to say, I, I think that all those people that died of AIDS should remember all the courage they had in fighting the disease instead of just laying down and dying, you know. Ah. Uh -huh. 